So applique, I have a collection of quilt blocks to share with you as well as um, embroidered towels. First of all, I thought, let's just talk about what is the definition of applique. So I'm going to switch back and forth today between some of my slides that I have loaded on my um, platform and then showing you samples that I have over here. So I'm going to start with the slides. So um, I'm going to jump over there right now and let's just talk first of all about the definition of applique and uh, this is the definition it was part of my book um, that i published under amy berkman which is the language of fashion it's a dictionary of fashion and sewing terms and so here it reads application is the decoration laid on or and applied to another surface um Petals, leaves, figures used on lace, fabric, and leather. French word meaning applied or put on, applique. And sometimes you'll see that word with, um, you know, here I go, I'm going to switch off. A little um, accent on the, the end, the French way to, um, I think, write applique. So... When I think of applique, I'm going to show you first one of my favorite applique pieces. This is a wonderful butterfly, and you can see where it has the blanket stitch. It's just very um, unique, and that's what I love about it, whether it be the fabric choice or it be the styling. And then on the left, you can see there is a Kansas City Star quilt block. So many of the vintage designs you'll see come from patterns that were in newspapers they were syndicated and this is one that was in the kansas city star for a butterfly so i thought i'd share that with you um and next i want to share another slide that shows this is a quilt block um that was actually created with both piecing and applique and embroidery. So the little vase that the flower's in or the um, bird bath that the flower's in is actually pieced. Um, but then the entire app, the, all the colored fabric is actually appliqued. So here you can see the back. I thought you'd enjoy um, just seeing, you know, some samples of things. And you'll note that I love how they actually added French knots up in the flower on that. And then I'm going to switch to back to me. And here I am because I want to show you what I picked up the other day um, that I was lucky enough to have my front friend um, Donna share some, um, some, quilt history uh, content in her collection with me. Hi, everybody. I'm glad everybody's out there watching. I see a few more people jumping on. Um, and just tell me where you're watching from. And remember to comment. Again, we're going to have a digital copy of the Alphabet Applique as the prize today. So say where you're from, where you're watching. So this is, this little treasure was a scrapbook. So like I said, many of the patterns were in newspapers and then people would go ahead and preserve those in scrapbooks and they would actually use, you know, catalogs, whatever, you know, was at hand. Um, everything was used. So this is an, this is a catalog that was actually a teacher's catalog of supplies that i that, um, Donna shared me with me that was filled with Kansas city star, um, quilt pattern cut cuts. So you can see here on the pages, um, how they were just glued on the pages of the catalog over, you know, the content that was for sale. And there's one that just fell off. You can see the glue on the back there. And this is, um, Job's tears. Um, one of the Kansas City blocks. So I'm lucky enough to live in Kansas City where these, the artists who created these blocks um, were. Now, I did find somebody's really special in this 
little scrapbook and that is Nancy Page. So Nancy Page is actually the historical content. She was there. Her name was Florence. Um, her, her pen name was Nancy Page. That was um, in where I found the designs that are the alphabet applique. And I thought it'd be fun. I'm going to try something new with you guys. I have a video that I'm going to play flipping through the pages of that catalog to the Nancy Page feature. And I have to scroll on down here and try to find my video that I loaded. And there it is. So let's see if I can... Okay, I just realized I'm talking and my mic is muted when the video plays. So before I play it, I'm just going to tell you to look at the pages and you'll see on the pages that Nancy Page, this was her quilt club. And this was the, um, I believe it's the Magic uh, Flower Vine series. Okay, so I'm, you won't hear me while I, I play this short, short little video, but take special note of the styling of these flowers. I really think they have a modern look to them. And um, then we'll jump over and look at some more of Nancy's work. So here we go. Okay. Was that fun? Seeing those designs, you know, flowers, everybody loves flowers. They're, they're timeless and, um, just bring a smile to your face. So flowers are one thing that you'll see lots and lots of applique designs for. And the other, um, motif that I noticed that I had a lot of in my collection was the sunbonnet, um, sunbonnet girl. And so I thought I'd share a few of those textiles from my collection. And um, before I do that, I'm going to jump over to the comments just to see what's going on over in the comments. And here we go. There's Kim. She's on vacation with friends in Michigan. Awesome. And I'm heading up to Michigan for an event the 31st of August. And it'll be in Alden, Michigan at the Helena Community Center, which is right next to the Alden Library. If any of you are in northern Michigan and want to come hear my lecture so vintage, I would love for you to join this event. And there's Kate. Hi, Kate. Good to see you. And Beautiful. Do I collect Kansas City Star quilt patterns is the question. And oh, yes, I do. I love collecting those patterns and have a, a, a pretty nice um, little archive. So welcome, everybody. Barbara is watching from Nebraska. And Beth says she loves the prints on the butterfly. I did, too. So, all right, we'll jump back over to the pictures and talk about sunbonnet. So this is the little, um, one of the little pieces that actually Donna also shared with me from her collection. And you can see this combines both the applique and the embroidery. So many times you'll see um, the outline in stitchery as well as the applique in fabric. And I'm going to also quickly show you a, a really darling sunbonnet quilt that I acquired. Um, I think I got it at Quilt Festival maybe. And it may be hard to see because of my lighting, but I don't know. Um, there you go. You can probably see all the little sunbonnets. So I need to count how many, but each one is different. And I did take a close-up picture of um, this. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Michelle just turned off our overhead lights, which makes it a little better. 
to view this. Okay, there you go. Look at that cute little green combination. Um, but now I have a quick close up to show you. So here's one of the little sunbonnet girls. You can see how her little feet and hand are embroidered, but the rest of her, her hat and her um, dress are actually fabric. And these were probably feed sack fabrics. Um, you guys like feed, love feed sacks like I do. I'll mention too, I am doing an event um, later this month for the Westport Historical Society. There's a quilt extravaganza happening and I'm going to be lecturing on um, on feed sacks there. So stay tuned for that. Um, more details to, coming at the end today. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple more. Um, I found these cute little uh, sunbonnet shapes that had been started. Again, this was Donna who shared this with me. A couple of these came from her sharing and they are, you know, one's already put together with its is foot. This one is still waiting to have. So you can see how the the pieces were combined and then this would be applied to a quilt. Um, and I did find this article too, this interesting piece of um, ephemera. I think it was from Women's World Magazine, but you can see the little sunbonnet all the different stylings of the sunbonnet um, that are out there. It's kind of an amazing, um, amazing motif when it comes to quilting and sewing. It's timeless and it's been used and recreated over and over again in many different styles. So I want to, and I will tell you, let me show you a couple pictures I have. So here, here was that, um, applique and combo I showed you and the ad I showed you. You can see actually even on the um the applique that's on the in the article, you can see little yo-yos were added. Who loves yo-yos out there? If you love yo-yos, comment and let me know. Maybe we'll talk yo-yos in a future Facebook live. And then one more article I'll share. Here you can see um this was an ad for quilt patterns from a magazine. And there again, we have another unique sunbonnet um, design. So when it comes to applique, I want to switch back to, I'm going to, um, let's see, let's switch this picture off. Here I am. Okay. I want to talk a little bit more about patchwork and applique as and different ways that I've incorporated it into product development that I've with my book line. And I do have, and many of you know about my book, Vintage Notions. And if there is a, a, a an applique feature in the book. So I thought I'd share that with you. Um, and you can see it is uh, right I don't know if the lighting is how the lighting is, but there, this is the, I believe it's in April that we have in the department of sewing, uh, the story of patchwork and applique. And you can see this fun graphic that, that applique design. And I actually realized when I was preparing for this, um, that I did have the original advertisement that we um, found that graphic in. So I thought that would be fun to share. And again, this is um, titled Patchwork Adds Beauty to One's Home. So thought you'd enjoy seeing another vintage advertisement. And then that double wedding ring um, actually matched up to a Nancy Page quilt block that I had in my collection. So that was kind of fun to to discover this information and these treasures we have amongst us. And I did, um, I did want to share another um, image in the Vintage Notions book. You guys know that I scanned a lot of my collection um, for this book. And one other image that I shared recently online was this sunflower. Uh, and again, you can see 
this is actually a pocket. So this gives me a chance to talk about how the book has four different pockets in it, one for each season. But again, this is a combination of applique and embroidery. And truly one of my favorite linens that was featured in the Vintage Notions book. So we've, um, that gives you the story on that. And then again, I'll get, I'll get a quick plug for my language of fashion. So when I read the dictionary just definition of applique to you, that came out of the language of fashion. Um, both of these are available on Amazon. Um, the language is available as a PDF download on my site too, amyberkman.com. And then another um, example of applique in book development that I've done over the years is the Storybook Stitches book. And I talked a little bit about this last week. If you missed last week's live, it was mainly focused on pearl buttons, but I did share a few vintage treasures, um, embroidery applique that I, I found on my trip to Michigan last in July. So the storybook stitches, I you can see behind me, I went ahead and um, in the background, I always get mixed up which way I'm supposed to turn this way or this way, but you can see behind me a yard long embroidery. So yard longs were those beautiful painting or prints of like roses that you'd see hanging over a, a bed, um, very popular. And this design was part of the storybook stitches book. I have a couple close-ups to show you because again, we're combining, let's go ABC, right? A is for applique. So what I love about this combination, I love the red work combined with the reproduction feed sack prints. If you love red work, we're talking about it again. We talked about it last week. Let me know you like red work and who out there enjoys embroidery. Um, and then here's the B. Uh, such cute prints and uh, cute embroidery. And then the C. And you can see the little girl even has polka dots on her dress that are probably French knots. So for those of you who enjoy embroidery, I thought I would share that. And now back to the alphabet applique. Um, I have the vintage quilt and the new quilt we made. So this is truly a, a vintage made modern episode. Um, this is the vintage version. And you can see the, the bird, the A for apple. And we'll start out by just comparing those two. And here we go. We Okay, so there they are on the vintage version. And here is the modern version that we created when we published that alphabet book, the applique, alphabet applique. And here's another example. Let's flip it over and Check out the ice cream. Who's ready for some ice cream this weekend? I think I am. And then there's a cute little jack in the box. Oh, and the flower. So the flower you see right here and you also see behind me right there, right? You see it? So that's one of the projects in the book. It's a block, a fabric block. I, why don't I grab that and show it to you? Because I think it's pretty, pretty clever. Um, and so you can see some more of the blocks that are in the, um, the book the, the elephant I think is really fun and, and more modern looking and the, um, let's see, we have some plain, the flower, the doll, and look, she has a sunbonnet. We're back to the sunbonnet. It's definitely a theme in applique. Um, so there you go. And again, I'll show you a few more, a little more about from the vintage quilt. You can see, oh, queen. I have a friend named Elaine 
and her nickname is Queen. So I think I'm going to have to uh, make this quilt block for her. And you know, you don't have to make the you can make these appliques. And one of my favorite ways to use applique is to actually on like a, a towel, a dish towel. So I think that would be a fun one to applique for her. Or maybe my mom would help me out and make it for Elaine. So if you're out there, Elaine, watching, uh, look in the mail, something, something fun might be coming soon. All right. I'm going to go back and look at the comments. Everybody keep commenting. There's uh, Barbara saying hello again, and let's look back at the comments, see if we had some people. Um, but Deborah says that I've never done red work, but I think it would be fun to try. Red work is fun, simple, one thread color, uh, just really a dynamic embroidery and great results in a little bit of time. And this... The book that this storybook stitches has some really darling embroidery. In fact, last week I shared um, this pillow. I don't know how well you can see it. That has actually a, pump, a pumpkin on it. So if you're looking for something for fall, this might be a fun project. And this book also, speaking of sunbonnets again, this book has a whole series of sunbonnet ideas for you to embroider. And those actually have, um, they've been tinted too. So there are instructions on hand tinting. And that could be another theme that we talk about in the Facebook Live upcoming. So um, I'm going to look back at, there's Michelle. She's sharing some of our um, links so that you'll in the comments you guys should find the links to some of these things I'm talking about and I'm gonna look back over to my slides and make sure I covered everything it looks like I did but as far as and we're coming to the to our end today so I did want to talk about events so if you're in Kansas City tomorrow I am heading over to Patty store Casey maker studio and fabrics and that's in mission kansas i'm going to be there in the morning talking about vintage notions um, my book and bringing some of my historical material uh, from the book and some of the newer books that i've created like the language of fashion and my vintage notions monthly magazine series so be sure if you're in the area come on over and say hello and i'll have some uh, a little free gift for you too if you stop by and say hello and then, um, and Patty's having a great big prize giveaway too this weekend. So if you go into the store, you can enter to win some really wonderful prizes. She's also teaching classes and she has, I think I have a picture of the apparel. Yes, she has a whole selection of Indigo Junction patterns on, in her store and samples. So please um, come by and say hello if you're in in the area or have a chance to, to visit Kansas city. And then I will all, then the end of the month on the 31st, which is a Tuesday morning, I'm going to be in Alden, Michigan talking, um, doing the presentation. So vintage. So it's just at the community center where the library is. This is the tag guild. Um, and there last week when I talked about buttons, I had visited their quilt show um, last month and bought some bags of buttons. And so if you want to learn more about buttons, be sure to watch last week's live or check out my blog post uh, that we have and you'll find the video there. So be sure to always um, be aware of the blog and what's happening on there. A lot of times I'll put these replays up on the blog and Michelle's coming in because I know she has a winner for me. So thank you very much, Michelle. And one more event that I want to talk about that I'm participating in is the quilt extravaganza that the Westport Historical Society is um, sponsoring. And I've been working with Marty and there is going to be a wonderful display of uh, Tammy Reed's quilts. Um, that is Tammy Reed, Andy Reed. You might know that name if you're in Kansas City. He's the coach of the Chiefs. So his wife collects vintage quilts and um, quilts and she's, there is going to be a presentation and that she's going to do as well as a quilt show at the Westport um, 
Historical Society in the church next door. And they're going to have some wonderful uh, presentations from various quilt historians as well as modern quilt creators. And I'm going to be doing a feed sack chat chat on feed sacks and that um i believe is maybe october 9th but we'll put a link to the website so you can look up and see the other wonderful uh wonderful lectures um it's really going to be a fun event and it lasts from september through october so if you can't get in right away um you'll be able to here I am back again. If you can't get in right away, you'll be able to um, find, you know, maybe one weekend you can go see uh, and hear a speaker or visit the displays. And I have our winner. It's Kathy Ranta. You are the winner of the alphabet applique PDF version that we will email to you. So if you want to leave your um, message me on Facebook with your email or email me, you're the winner at Amy at Amy, Amy B at Amy and I'll get you out a copy of this. Again, good point to bring up is that many of the Books that I've published are now available as ebooks, PDFs that you can download at amybarrickman.com. So be sure to go to the shop tab and check out what content we have there. Red work, embroidery, um, quilting, unique designs, a lot, many wonderful ideas uh, from my vintage collection that I'm able to share with you now on amybarrickman.com and share with you during these Facebook lives. So I'll look forward to um, seeing you again soon. Next week, I'll be um, taking a break, but I hope to be back again in a couple weeks. The best way to know if I'm li going live is to sign up for my newsletter at Amy. Barrickman.com. When you do, you'll you'll get a little printable gift too. So um, and follow me on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I encourage you to take a look at our Vintage Made Modern Facebook group where people can share their own collection. So if you have a fun applique block you'd want to share, why not post it? I'll post a few of the pictures from today's lecture on that group. And I encourage you to invite your friends. If you have friends you think might enjoy the content I'm sharing, please share um, my page, my group, my YouTube channel, and my website with friends you think that would enjoy this. I would really, really appreciate that. I want everybody to have a great weekend, and I'm going to have a blast over at KC Maker Studio and Fabrics. If you're there, um, please come say hello. And if you get back to Kansas City at some point, it's a great shop. We have many great stores here in Kansas City. So it's a mecca of creative inspiration. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Have a great weekend.